Australians use one billion disposable nappies each year. This amount would fill the MCG three times over. A single disposable nappy can take up to 300 years to decompose in landfill. For many, statistics like these feel overwhelming. Is this really the world we want to leave behind? Sometimes hope comes in surprising forms. When Jazuli was born, I was using cloth. She's nearly four now. Cloth is great. It's really nice to do, but God, it's labour intensive and it's so hard being a new mother. Like, you sort of think that you stop working and suddenly you've got all this time to do all these things, but you haven't. It's all about sleep for the mothers. That's what it's all about. Mothers feel guilty, you know. They, they're using disposable nappies because of the convenience and because all the other good things about disposable, but the terrible guilt of the landfill and the impact on the environment is, it's, a, it's like a big load and mothers have got enough loads. Regina runs a nappy tree, the home-based business selling biodegradable nappies. We're the kind of people that, like, we rode our motorbikes across the country without a map. You know, the idea of having a nappy business would, would never have occurred to me. Thank you, Sophie. Everyone gets a flower, don't they? Regina started the nappy tree soon after the birth of her first daughter, Jizuli. Yeah, I wasn't looking for a business when I started it, but I was just basically looking for an alternative to the big white plastic landfill. I looked around, couldn't find anything that I could use, and ended up getting some of these sent over from New South Wales and just asked her where I could get them over here, and they said, well, you can't really, and the postage was really expensive. and. When I said, why can't you get them here, they just said, we haven't got a distributor. I just thought maybe that could be me. It's completely naive, because I didn't even know what a distributor was, to be honest. I had no idea about, you know, running a business or owning one or how things actually operate. There weren't really weren't a lot of people going, oh, good on you, great, until I... Um, had an article in the Sunday Times in 05, just before I started. People were just phoning me unsolicited. They didn't even want nappies. They were just phoning to say, good on you, what a great thing that you're doing. And so then I just felt um, really energised by that and realised that was going to be the thrust of it. Just to make people feel good about what they're doing and give them the choice to feel good. The nappy tree is more than just a business venture. It reflects Regina's philosophy about life and community. They're disposable, yeah, they're not, they're not cloth, they're called eco-friendly disposable, so they're good for the environment in that they already use a fair quantity of recycled material. The, the wood pulp in them's certified renewable, so, you know, I have customers who say that they're able to compost the nappies in three weeks. In my little farm, it takes more like three months. Yeah. Jazzy, yeah, you're going to eat them up when they grow? Hold on. With two daughters and a busy life, Regina tries to confine her business to one day of the week. We're going to get some nappies for But Tanya. even on Nappy Wednesday, there are people to meet and places to be. Regina's first meeting is with Bob, the proprietor of the local fair trade cafe. She has already designed a poster for the Fair Trade Festival, and today Bob wants to discuss a new pamphlet for the store. He has also offered to sell Regina's nappies. Oh no! <laughs> it just feels nice to be doing business with people as people, just to be normal people and to try and do an ethical thing and a good thing and um, to help people and, you know, not just be a machine in terms of business. And so. That's been both the challenge and the reward. Despite being the corporate and commercial hub of the city, 
Regina's area has the feel of a small, friendly village. Uncle Paul, we're coming! Hello, darling. You want a cook? Do it, Lolly? Hey. Oh, Lolly. Oh, they're nice, aren't they? I did a local Take history article about palazzos because they've been here for 30 years and so I just did this sort of little graphic stuff and when I came over to take the photos and we said, oh, well, should we take photos? And we said, oh, the garden. And we sort of looked out and went, oh, it was just like cactuses and weeds. And so I just started talking to him about how he needs a garden. And then he was so excited about the garden that he just blurted out that he could do something, you know, for me. And that was to let me store my nappies over there behind the blue roller door. It's just a neat deal. It wasn't organised that way, it just sort of came about. For Regina, it is good to mix business with pleasure, especially at the end of a long day. A bit of quiet time, because Mum and Dad have come over and are going to stay with Jazuli and Sophie for an hour and a half. Oh, that's nice. I'm just going to sneak off to yoga while I've got the chance. My old friend Reggie is a yoga teacher. I do his signs and they've started an organic clothing shop over there and I've made them some nice stuff for that, so nice deeds between friends. For many people, the idea of raising a young family and starting a business would be out of the question. But Regina's conscience won over convenience and she decided to take some action in some small but measurable ways. Yeah. <laughs> Give one. This one? There we go. You hold that one.